So we're going to begin by talking about parenting. Now, when your kids are misbehaving, what you need to do, no, wrong kind of parenting, so sorry. Uh, we're not getting into that. This is when you want some object to follow some other object, and it's meant to be a permanent relationship. I cannot stress that enough. People somehow get the misconception in their head that when I pick up some chapstick, for example, or a bottle or a glass or whatever, that's parenting. This is not parenting, this is constraining. So parenting is meant to be permanent, parenting permanent. Remember that connection between those two words there. So let's first off give ourselves some things to parent. Uh, I'm gonna throw a simple cube and a sphere out in here just for examples. Uh, <laughs> we'll slide our cube out so we can actually see where the thing is over there. Make the hypergraph a little bit smaller. It does not need to be quite that large. So <clears throat> let's say I want to, as the terminology goes, parent the cube to the sphere. What that means when I say parent something to something else, the thing I'm parenting it to becomes the parent. The thing I was just talking about, parenting the cube, that's going to be the child of the sphere once I'm done with this. Now, order of selection makes a difference with a lot of these tools you have in here. So, because I could have potentially multiple children for this thing, I could have not just one cube, I could have a dozen cubes in here, but for now it's just one. But I choose all the children first and then shift click and add my parent, parent to be rather, as the last thing in my selection. My uses that last selected item as the, the trigger to know, okay, that's the thing that's going to be the parent once I'm all done. So if you want to use the menu, it's in the edit menu right over here, parent almost at the very bottom. The letter P is the hotkey <clears throat> for that. So if you want to use that, that's cool. There are options for both parenting and unparenting. I'm not going to get into the details of those, just covering the basics for right now. So if I parent this thing, you notice that the cube didn't move. It's still sitting right where it was before, but in the hierarchy over here, I can see I've got my parent sphere and the cube is now its child. And the same kind of thing can be seen down here in the hypergraph. So you're starting to see that kind of very familiar tree type structure that you see with files and folders on your hard drive. So if I want to unparent something, what I do is I choose the child, the thing that has some current parent to it. I don't choose the parent anymore in this one, just the child. That can be done either here or here or here. It doesn't matter where you choose it. With that child selected, just go edit, unparent, and it goes back out to the same level as the parent. Now right now, the parent is at the world level, uh, the root level of my scene, so it goes back to that level again. So not a whole lot to you know see there as far as parenting goes, but there are some things to be aware of. Now I'm actually gonna do something a little tricky here and slide my sphere over this way for this next part of the demo in a couple seconds. Uh, before I even do that though, I do need to show you how to do this stuff manually. Uh, this all involves dragging and dropping things. So in the outliner, if I choose the thing to be, I want to be a child in a couple seconds, middle click, drag that on top of the sphere, and notice that dashed line or box that you see as I'm dragging this around. When there's a box around something, that means that thing is going to be the parent once I let go of the mouse. So that's the very clear visual indicator for that. Now, if I want to unparent this thing out here, I just choose the thing that's a child, click and drag, and look for a line in between things, either above or it could be down below. Kind of hard to see when the highlight's there, obviously. Um, but if I drop this up here, now that becomes at, at that same point as the parent in the hierarchy. Same thing happens down here, but down here in the hypergraph, um, the kind of horizontal line I'm seeing things lining up here right now, that's kind of the root of the, uh, the hierarchy setup here. So. Um, but a, same thing as before, middle click, drag and drop one onto the other, that thing becomes apparent. To unparent it, click and drag on either side <clears throat> with the middle mouse button, it does not matter which way you go, and it goes back to that same uh, upper level there. So, next part to talk about are some important things to keep in mind when you have things parented. All of an object's transformations, they're always, even when something has no parent, they're always relative to its parents. So if it has no parent, then what's the parent? The parent then is the world. So it's always a relative relationship. So <clears throat> the cube sitting over here is negative 2.937 and some change probably. 
uh, on the left side there based off of the world's coordinates. Once I parent that thing to the sphere, <clears throat> those coordinates now are relative to the sphere's position. So it's negative 5.499 on the left of the sphere. Uh, and notice that my just makes those changes automatically to show you, you know, what's the, what's the value based off of the current parent. If I drag this thing over to the side, for example, and it's a 3.7 whatever, now I unparent this thing. Now it's back at the world level coordinates again. So be aware, the coordinates are always relative to the parent. Same thing goes for rotation and for scale. So if I were to parent this thing back to the cube again, uh, and I take my parent object there, and I, uh, let's say I scale this up, it scales the cube along with it, it'll rotate it along with it. So if I do some you know, transformations like this, then I unparent my cube. Again, it's gonna stay exactly where it is, how it's oriented, but now that rotation is based off of its own, the world's coordinates, same thing for the scale. Uh, so once I had that thing parented back in here, you notice the scale was one because it was exactly matching a 100% equal match for its parent's scale. But now that I take it out of the hierarchy back to the, uh, the, the world level again, now it's, there's no other relative reference there. So it's 1.41, which is what the parent level was for the scale. So all transformations are always relative. Also be aware of this. I'm gonna reselect my uh, cube, drop it back on the sphere again. So if I choose my sphere and notice the highlighting here, my cube is also highlighted in the same color, but that doesn't mean I've literally selected the cube. I have only literally selected the sphere. And you can tell that by more clearly the highlighting you see in the outliner and down here in the hypergraph also. So only my sphere is literally selected. The highlighting on the cube is just a reminder to tell me that the cube's gonna go along for the ride with whatever I happen to do to the sphere. And I also notice that my, uh, my tool here is sitting on top of the sphere, not on top of the cube. If I add my cube to that selection, that becomes the last thing selected now. It is literally selected and my sphere is also selected. Again, notice the white highlighting on that one. Uh, and also because all parent transformations and operations of any kind, well, almost any kind, uh, relate to the children, the same thing goes for deleting it. So if I delete my sphere, the, the cube there is a child, the cube goes along for the ride and that's gone as well.